Hello! So the big question on everyone everyone's asking this week is Is Esther any good? Is Stormseeker Esther worth pulling for? So let's take a look at her banner real quick, and which I'm gonna say it's 60k lapis, basically, for the pity. And that's that's really really high. So basically you're you're rolling dice to get her. Now, is she worth it? Um Okay, she's the first premium unit on global. You know, she doesn't have a kit like those JP premium units where it's just like, power up their LB, use their LB, then repeat. You know, she actually has a full kit. So let's look at her whole kit and make a better decision on her, okay? So she is a Bolting Strike, Stardust Ray, Extreme Nova Chaining. The Extreme Nova comes from her uh, Limit Burst. Guys, if you are just trying to pull her and that's it, do her story event. I'm going to go over to the story event real quick. So look, the story event right here. Well, apparently I didn't download the data. Okay, so you do the story event. It's so easy. It's, it's really great. And it gives you a, an equipable materia that uh, allows any unit to chain with uh, Esther. Okay. Let's see here. Uh, Lightning Fast Legend. Lightning Fast Legend gives you a 30% attack boost and gives you a uh, chaining move that costs 0 MP that allows you to chain with Esther, and it is lightning. Um, so, and then it's physical. So you could imbue it even. It's really cool, and you can equip this on anybody. So it allows your support unit to chain with Esther. So even though that is her chaining family, you're still good as long as you do the story event. Now, when the story event goes away, you'll never be able to get that materia that materia again. So it is very important. You only have to do the second stage. So, um, all right. So what do we got with her? All right. Her trust mastery is 60% attack and defense, and it gives you 25% of four different killers. Yeah. Okay. Um, her... STMR is a great sword. Now, later in the month, or we're beginning of next month, I can't really keep track of when it is. It's like three weeks from now. Um, whenever the great sword gets the variance update, this weapon will become much better because the variance will be better. Um, and uh, it does increase the attack for Esther by a flat 500, um, increases her LB damage um, or anyone's LB damage by 75%. So all in all, it's a pretty good great sword. And her vision card is my own worst enemy. It's 110 attack with um, increase attack and defense 100% when equipped with a greatsword. Really, I feel like most units cap that out easily anyways. Um, and it does have 50% killers for demons, reapers, stones, and machines. So whenever you're going against specifically those, it might be a best in slot. But when you're not, probably won't be. Um... And then uh, against an FFB unit, it is 75% damage. So that's pretty good um, for it only having to be an FFBE unit. Okay, but again, you only get that card when you get her to EX3. So in order to get that, you have to whale. Like, you really have to pull. Or just get super lucky. Um, okay, she has the true Brave Shift, which means she can go back and forth between her two forms incredibly easily um it's just back and forth every turn if that's what you decide you want to do she can equip damn near everything except for guns but we have equip gun materia um i mean a few others but you know equip gun all right um her regular skills uh she's got triple cast she's got an 87 percent defense break for five turns um uh this is all bolting strike and star destroy chains uh, she has a, a, a bolting slice powers up as you use it, and it does increase her own LB gauge. Um, it increases up to a 270x max. That's a pretty good mod, um, just for a regular chaining move. And you could, you know, triple cast that. All right. Her, uh, bolting impact is just a defense break. Um, or no, I'm sorry, not defense break. Ignore defense. And, uh, these are backloaded, which is awesome. 
um, and it does decrease accuracy 25% AOE. So you know how like uh, Sky does the 50%? Well, if you decrease accuracy 20% to the enemy, then, you know, say you only have to build 80% evasion. Sounds pretty good to me. Um, and then increase LB gauge 35 to cast her with Stardust Ray Chaining. Um, she can self-imbue herself with lightning. She gives a highest, highest buff possible so far of 60% for um, magical and physical lightning damage. That is what sets her apart. 60% buff. All right. And then she does 135% lightning imperil towards the enemy. Uh, and again, fills her LB again. Uh, she gives herself 300% uh, and all allies, um, attack, defense, and spirit. No magic, sorry. And then uh, she does do 120% killers to all allies for demon, machine, stone, and reaper. Uh, and then she increases accuracy to all allies by 50%. And again, fell LB gauge. Now these are her cooldown moves. And um, she can enable five skills to one ally, chain lightning. Now, this is a 20 turns cooldown, so you can't use that one um, much. But she can imbue an ally to have chain lightning for five turns. Now, what is chain lightning? Chain lightning is an extreme Nova chain. So, if you don't get the materia, you can still use her to imbue somebody else with extreme Nova chaining. So, they will still have that extreme Nova chaining. You'll just have to use it as a skill from her, as opposed to just having it in a materia. Okay? Um, her Magnus, which when you use her LB, as long as you've got her LB maxed out, it fills her Magnus back up. You have three charges um, per use, uh, one use per battle, okay? So basically, every time you use your Limit Burst, if it's not max, um, it fills one charge. When you have all three charges, you get to use it. So use your limit burst, you get it back. Basically, it's when it's empty, use it, use a level 40 LB. Okay? Um, uh, decrease sword resistance 30% to one enemy. Great sword resistance, sorry. Decrease great sword resistance. So she's got her own imperil for th sword resistance. So this makes her on like the same level as like Laura Croft or Carton for are they good? And I think uh, we've seen many times how good Lara Croft and Carton are. Um, she's on the same level as like Sephiroth or even higher than that for damage. Um, so her having her own imperil and her own imbue, pretty good. And her own buff for the elemental typing damage. Um, uh, th this move also does a little bit of damage. Um, it increases her LB damage by 300%. And uh, it does increase all of her physical modifiers by 175x. Now, that's for two turns, so that would be 175x. And you add that to this skill if you've got it capped out. And you have a... 350? No, 450. 450x buff? I think I did my math right. Um... And uh, then she increases her LB gauge. And that is a bolting strike move, so you can chain her uh, Magnus with other skills. Um, she auto-casts Surging Energy at the start of battle. That just um, increases LB damage to all allies and increases LB gauge fill rate to all allies. Um, she's got some attack, you know, passive uh, stats. She passively regens um, uh, MP by 10%, which is a pretty hefty MP regen. Um... 50% uh, evasion built into her kit, and uh, she cannot be stopped or charmed. Um, uh, her chain starts easier, and her elemental chain starts easier. Her chain modifier cap is uh, based at 100%, so all you need is an extra 100%. Um, she has 50% built-in killers to everything. Everything. Um... She has a 70% chance of decrease of being targeted, but she has evasion. Um, and uh, then she wants to have a great sword. If she has her TMR or STMR equipped, then you get uh, equipment attack by 300% um, when single wielding. 
and uh, she gets 150% killers to the Demon Machine, Stone, and Reaper. So I don't see why you wouldn't run her um, Trustmaster or STMR on her. And it upgrades her normal attack to Hop and Stop. Um, single attacks hit two times. Okay. Hop and Stop is a physical damage with an all right to one enemy with Bolting Strike Chaining. Um, and it fills the LB gauge to all allies. And I guess if you're in Arena, inflict Stop to one enemy. Okay, so let's take a look at her LB. Um, it does it increases her attack by a lot. Um, it does 200x for physical damage, and it restores three Magnus charges to caster. Boom. Um, again, if you're at the lower levels, it only charges one. Uh, and enable area effect to all units. So this is a field effect, um, and that is the boost LB damage by 100%. Um, the field effect sprite is pretty nice. Um, I'll see if I can pull that up while uh, we're shifting over. Okay, so let's just do her field effect real quick. Just because I like the um I like the sprite and I think it's pretty cool. It changes the whole map battle to the map battle background of from her story event, and then you've got the lightning um bunny. Uh so uh bolt rabbit, I don't know. <laughs> um, but it's up there and it does the boost the LB damage. Now that applies to the whole field. The only way you could stack this with other effects is if it's uh, only to one side or the other, so like an uh, enemy side or an ally side. Um, so boost LB damage. Now I'll say you could apply like Aranea afterwards and it would be a stacking, um, but uh, this will overwrite any buffs since it is an um, AOE buff. So it overwrites any buffs, but if you place any afterwards, then you're good. All right, so let's continue looking at her kit. All right, so from her kit, we have in her brave shift form. Uh, again, she can still equip almost everything. And then we have uh, the triple cast. She can decrease attack and magic by 80%. Um, doesn't enough damage. She fills the morale gauge. Finally, we get a morale skill only in her brave shift form, apparently. Um, she can remove all debuffs from herself and cure breaks and stop and charm to all allies um, and increase resistance to all those and grant chance to counter physical attacks okay great um so with normal attack uh oh and her if she counters um it will do a physical attack which is a normal attack so that'll be uh let's see here To step and stop step and pep um so her normal attack will be changed to uh physical attack with defense scaling restore hp and mp to all allies and increase lb gauge to caster so as long as you're using her cover she'll be filling hp and mp to the entire party and giving herself her own lb gauge um all right so then we've got her provoke increased chance of being targeted mitigate damage um, mitigate damage against demon machine and stone by 75% and evade four physical attacks for five turns to cast her. That's pretty great. Um, she has imbue herself with the lightning again. This is the same move with that 60%. Um, this is the same, uh, move. All, all of these cooldowns are the same. Um, and then we have storm guardian mitigate damage taken 90%, uh, for two turns to cast her for 75% to all allies, uh, grant an AP, HP barrier with morale boost um, to all allies, and then evade five physical attacks for two turns to cast her. All right. And then her Magnus in this form is, which you can get back with the limit burst, um, it is chance to protect all allies 100% with 40% damage mitigation, uh, increases her defense by 350%, and the 75% physical mitigation Decrease lightning resistance 100% and absorb lightning damage taken for three turns to all allies. So all allies for three turns get absorb lightning. That's incredible. And so you can just keep rotating between absorb lightning and her limit burst. It's amazing. It's amazing. Um, all right. So you can ba effectively make your entire team heal off of lightning damage while she's still being a tank. A little broken. All right. 
She auto casts a surging energy at the start of battle. That is where she fills the um or gets the LB gauge fill rate up and increases LB damage. Um, has passive stats again, the physical evasion 50% and the resistance to charm. Um, the chain modifier caps and the killers. Uh, she now increases her defense by her defense by 60% when equipped with a great sword, and her defense and spirit 40% when equipped with clothes. And now her equipment defense. Um, is uh, scaled up by 400%, and she has Guts for uh, a, a over a 10% HP lock, and the Shadow cast Supercharge Protection at the start of battle. Now, what does that do? That is a Provoke. I mean, I'm sorry, not Provoke. That is an Auto Cover. So if you have her in her Brave Shift form, she'll Auto Cover. All right. And then her normal attack changes to the... Uh, healing and LB gauge fill uh, move, with, which is bolting strike chaining. All right, and then her limit burst in her brave shift form. This is a cover with 50% mitigation for herself. For omni cover, so she covers physical and magical. The only thing she wouldn't cover is fixed damage and damage over time. Although I think actually fixed damage can be covered by omni. Um, so it's only damage over time. Uh, and then she does mitigate damage by 75% for three turns to cast her. And then auto revive for 90% um, HP. And then increase the lightning pres resistance by 150% for three turns to all allies. So she becomes the de facto keep your team alive tank. While still being able to do moderate damage with... Um, uh, her defense scaling moves in this form. Uh, so she's a little bit better than Maeve. Uh, and she's just, I mean, she's she's a good unit. She's a good unit, and I think that um, from here on out, we're going to be seeing a lot of her in Clash of Wills. Uh, we'll see a little bit of her in Dark Visions, and we'll definitely be seeing her in any trial content that we get. Um, just uh, to go on that, there have been some trial guides coming out where you can do the... Um, uh 12 race trials and the race trials are being done with basically only esther if you're trying to do this clash of wills that's up right now you can do it with basically only esther um for those people that are kind of like looking for a uh super nva clear um like i usually do i wanted to do this video a little bit with that but it's just so difficult to do um, without Esther, I tried doing it with OG Esther. It's just, it's so hard. Um, so new Esther is, she's worth it. She is, um, but I'm not going to say to wail for her and get her like EX3. If you don't get her, you'll live. But she is definitely a unit that is going to be in the meta for a very long time. They made sure that she's worth pulling. So if you get her, she's going to carry you through all content. Um, but if you miss her, she's going to the permanent pool. She's not a limited unit, so you could always off banner her. So should you pull her? Yes. Should you spend every dime you own? No, because she is a permanent unit and she will be in the pool forever. So, uh, good luck to anybody that's going for her. I definitely think that she is worth it. Um, thanks for watching. Much love and peace.